Well, since our last interview, I interviewed Teddy Atlas. Mm. And I asked him about the rumor that Customato was gay. Mm. And I pointed out that Cus was never married, had no children. The woman who worked with him, his partner, was not a romantic partner. Right. She just helped him run the school. Mm. And Teddy said, uh, that's just not true. He said he talked to Cus, and he said Cus told him the reason why he never got married was because he was married to the sport of boxing. Mm -hmm. and he felt that he needed to devote his entire life to creating world champion boxers, and had he had a wife or kids, it would have taken him away from that, or it would have been unfair to his kids. Mm -hmm. So he completely dedicated his whole life to creating world champions, which he did on two separate occasions, right? Right, yeah. Um, uh, Jose Torres. And Mike Tyson. There was always rumors that, that Cuss was possibly gay or something like that. Is that any truth to that? I don't know. None when it comes to as far as... I as far as I know, none. But okay. I can't control what people say, but none. He was a man's okay. man. He grew up in Brug Brugner Boulevard in Everlast, near Everlast factory. Me and him drove down there to get equipment all the time. He would drive me nuts before we could get to the warehouse to buy the equipment. He'd go by his old house. Teddy, that's where I grew up. Across the, I know because I've been here 452 times. I know because across the street, Murderers Incorporated. They, they, they were there. Yep, that's right. That was his neighborhood. All right, because I know nothing about any of that stuff. All I know is he was a great trainer. He was a great mentor, um, and like everybody, he was human. He was human. And at the end, I think he got tested in those human ways where he wanted to have one more champion. And, yeah. and I, I feel if he wasn't at that point in his life where he was getting older and his whole life was boxing, he once told me, to your point, he said, Teddy, you know why I never got married? I never got married because it would have been unfair. So what do you mean? Because I never got married because it would have been unfair to a woman and to a child to marry them because my marriage was this, boxing. So uh, Camille Ewald was not his wife? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay. Might as, okay. Hold on. Let me look this up because now. Yeah, never married. Okay. Uh, D'Amato and Ewald were never married. Okay. All of their close friendship lasted for decades. Hmm. Yeah, she was responsible for cooking and household chores. Oh. According to this article. Mm-hmm. Wikipedia. All right. Yeah, so no, he was never married. All right. <laughs> Do you believe that? Believe what? That that uh, he wasn't gay. Yeah, but you know, I don't. I shoot, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I've heard the rumor before, but I, you know, of course, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting and, and, that because the, the the rumor it culminated with he passed from from pneumonia, and his partner Jim Jacobs passed from pneumonia as well. Oh, meaning he had AIDS. Pneumonia. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so know that, man. that that's where I believe yeah. I've heard the rumor because they they go oh you know usually people who die of AIDS die of pneumonia, pneumonia yeah. and, 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 and so forth yeah yeah it's just so I you know I don't know I, I of course I, I had no idea ne never really yeah but but you played into... Mike Tyson and you went up there did did you go up to like the, the yes, camp and everything else like that and oh, you yeah. spoke to people around him and, and so forth did you oh, meet yeah. with uh, Teddy Atlas? What's that? Did you ever meet with Teddy Atlas? Oh yeah, I met with Teddy Atlas before doing the movie. Aha! Uh -huh. I, I sat down across the table with him. I, I sat down with uh, Kevin Rooney. Mm -hmm. I, I put myself on the porch of that Catskill home and met with people who lived with him. Because, I mean, I was just basically like a detective. I was like, hey, I gotta play this role anyway. So I'm using my own dime to go there mm. and talking to Kevin Rooney and Get, getting his side. I wanted to know Mike Tyson's side instead of just going off of a script that some things I didn't believe. You know, and I was like, I I don't believe this. You know, because it was it was something in the script that said that when Teddy Atlas pulled the gun on him, mm -hmm. okay, 
and pointed it at his head, but then shot off like this. Wow, what a segue, right? You know, see how these things turn around. Mm -hmm. But um, that Mike Tyson cowered and cried. I read that in the script. I'm like, I don't believe that shit. Sat with Teddy Atlas, who admitted. I said, did, did, did Mike Tyson cry? Did he, the coward? He said, no, no, no. He just kind of looked at me defiantly. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> but you see on the script, it says says this. He said he kind of ran away and cowered. He said, no, no. He just kind of looked at me like, I said, okay, thank you. And that that was changed in the script because I, I absolutely did not believe a cat like myself from Brooklyn around the same age would behave that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, I asked him about that. And um, yeah, he didn't say that he he cowered. And, you mm -hmm. know, I brought up. Uh, in that script, it's it, yeah. t it totally yeah. had Mike Tyson bitching out. And yeah. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And I also, because me and you talked before that you said that uh, the he, you know, Mike Tyson went and got a crew to go back and kill Teddy Atlas. I don't know. I ain't gonna say nothing to that. Yeah. I ain't gonna. Say, I, I, I've heard that. Yeah, the, the, Mike that Tyson was the did, did not cow. Did not cow. Right. He and was I, like, I asked him, like, okay. Yeah. I, I asked him whether that part was true. He goes, well, I don't know. He goes, but basically, yeah. after the gun incident, Cuss basically said, "Hey, I gotta choose one of you, and I'm going with Tyson." Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. he also said was that he offered him a uh, five percent of Tyson's lifetime earnings uh, to leave, and. uh he turned it down, but you know, he said in retrospect that was just a make believe number. You can't give someone five percent of their lifetime. No, earnings. nobody like, can do that. You know, nobody I mean, it's just uh, yeah. Let me just get you out of here really quickly. And we got a knock from one of the guys that a friend of mine, friend of Cuss's from the gym, and you know, he said, "Can I talk to you?" Cuss wants me to tell you something. And he gave me a deal. Offered me a deal: five percent of Tyson's earnings for the rest of his life, or whatever, the rest of his career, if I would leave. I'm leaving anyway. And, you know, I still, I still had a little bit of growing to do, a little maturing to do. So I did the easy thing. I told him to shove it somewhere and to tell Cuz to shove it somewhere because all I felt was betrayed. I didn't feel nothing else. I didn't feel like I lost money. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I felt like I got betrayed. That's all I felt. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? He could have been, he, they could have got him out to keep him alive because, yeah. you know, Tyson's got dogs back home. I'm you sure know? he does. You know what I mean? I'm sure. Well, you he can tell it. by the people he hung out with later in life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I know, shit, I know what would happen if somebody did that to me. Hmm. And, you know, and, and, and I got warriors that I grew up with. 